most of the Tyson Fury diehards make the Gypsy King out to be some kind of perpetual victim. A man who's always hard done by, but who's never in the wrong. In their minds, not one bad thing which has ever happened in Tyson Fury's career was of his own making. Every single bad thing that's ever happened to him was somebody else's fault. In their minds, there is absolutely no legitimate reason whatsoever to ever criticize anything that Tyson Fury has ever said or done. And anybody who does criticize anything about Tyson Fury, be it things he's said or done, his performances in the ring, etc., anyone who's criticized him even in the slightest way is labeled a Tyson Fury hater who's either someone that is uh, prejudiced against gypsies or someone who's a matchroom fanboy. This is the outrageous and ridiculous attitude that most of the Fury diehards have. This is how unbelievably warped and biased they are and yet they have the audacity to point fingers at other people and accuse them of being biased. I mean, you couldn't make it up. It's so absurd. The reality of it is that most of the bad things that have happened in Tyson Fury's career were of his own making. That's the reality of it. You often hear the Tyson Fury diehards lamenting the fact that Anthony Joshua is more popular in the UK than Tyson Fury. And again, they put this down to some kind of conspiracy by matchroom combined with prejudice against gypsies. They completely discount the real reasons why Tyson Fury wasn't as popular as Anthony Joshua for most of his career. And what are those real reasons? Well, it's real simple. It's not rocket science. But let's take you through it step by step. First of all, Tyson Fury signed a professional promotional contract with Mick Hennessy. I mean, you sign with Mick Hennessy, you're 2-0 down before the game's even started. So, so that's not a good start, is it? You, you, you sign with Hennessy, you're fighting in leisure centers against puddings after that right because that was bad enough signing with Hennessy you then start attacking David Price trash talking him Price at the time was seen as the as the best thing since sliced bread in British boxing he had a big fan base on Merseyside and it was spreading throughout the UK this was at the height of the Klitschko era where people were desperate for Challenges to take on Klitschko. Now, Tyson Fury had gone life and death with John McDermott. So people didn't believe in Tyson Fury. I'm talking about the general public as much as they believed in David Price. So Price had this bigger fan base. And if Fury had looked at Price and, you know, understood, okay, this guy's got a big fan base. I can't start trash talking him too much. Me and him are going to fight anyway. You know, I don't need to trash talk him to make the fight. So let me just be a bit respectful here. Maybe I can steal some of his fans. You know, particularly if I fight him and beat him. But no, he didn't do that. He went in, he started attacking David Price, calling him a plumber, a big stiff idiot, all this kind of stuff. Well, anyone with half a brain cell is going to know that you're going to get an adverse reaction from the fans, from the British public, when you're attacking one of the most... uh popular upcoming British fighters in David Price like that. And then to make matters worse, instead of giving the British public what they wanted and facing David Price in a British title fight because Price was Fury's mandatory at one point, Fury decides to vacate the belt and deny the British public that fight. Again, we're not talking about who's the better fighter out of Fury and Price. We're talking about the perception that the British public had of Fury at the time. Yeah? 
They didn't like the fact, for one, he was trash-talking Price the way he was. Then they didn't like the way he pulled out of the fight and vacated the belt to go and fight Martin Rogan. So this is not a good start by Tyson Fury in terms of PR. Signing with Hennessy, fighting in leisure centers is not good. Going life and death with McDermott is not good. Trash talking David Price and pulling out of the British title fight is not good. This is not good in terms of building up his popularity with the British public. Later on down the line, um, he obviously fights Steve Cunningham. Very tough fight with Cunningham. Before that, he had a tough fight against Neville Pikage. Again, this is Hennessy promoted, which is never going to be good for you in terms of building up your public profile. But struggled against uh, Steve Cunningham. Then the rivalry with David Hay starts. And in fact, it probably started a bit before that. But this rivalry with David Hay starts. David Hay was the most popular British fighter at the time. Once again, if you're going up against a guy who's 10 times more popular than you, and you're coming out trash talking him and being crass and all this kind of stuff, what do you think is going to happen? Of course, there's going to be a big public backlash, backlash against you. Imagine if, I know they're different weight classes, but imagine if, uh, Tiafimo Lopez came out and started trash talking Canelo whose side do you think the majority of the Mexican public are going to take they're going to take Canelo's side it don't take a rocket scientist to figure that out <laughs> all right so he starts trash talking David Hay the majority of the British public are on David Hay's side obviously <laughs> under the circumstances all right because he's just a, a far more popular fighter at the time. He's been in world title fights. He's won world titles. He's, you know, fought loads of different people. Obviously, he's going to have a bigger fan base than this guy who, you know, wasn't popular from early because of the whole David Price situation and being promoted by Mick Hennessy. Yeah? Then, you know, the whole David Hay fight, that all goes away because David Hay pulls out and whatnot. Tyson Fury then switches over to Frank Warren and Box Nation, which from a promotional point of view is not much better than Mick Hennessy. Yeah, and he was still actually kind of promoted or co-promoted by Hennessy up until the Klitschko fight. But he's still in a poor situation in terms of exposure to the wider public. Yeah, the wider British public do not have as keen an interest in boxing as me or you. They're only seeing fleeting moments of Tyson Fury here and there. Yeah, they, all, all they ever know, you know, they're not paying attention to his, most of his fights. They're just paying attention when he comes out trash talking David Price and pulls out. Trash talking David Hay, one of the most popular British fighters. And then, and then they see him get dropped by Cunningham on Channel 5. And they're thinking this guy's an imposter. This is, this is what the, the general public in the UK are thinking when they're seeing this guy at this time. So up until that point in Fury's career, w when he fought um, Klitschko, from a PR perspective, it was like the perfect example of what not to do <laughs> when it comes to PR for a fighter. Like, you don't want to sign with Hennessy. You don't want to come in, you know, and start trash talking fighters who have got a much bigger fan base than you and then pull out against David Price, which he did. Um, against David Hay, obviously, he didn't pull out. It was Hay who pulled out. And hey, you know, whatever, he's received a lot of criticism in his career too. But then, even in the lead up to the Klitschko fight, what did Tyson Fury start doing? He started trash talking, even prior to the Klitschko fight, he started trash talking Anthony Joshua, a gold medalist, a guy with, you know, a, a, a big growing fan base because of the fact that he was a gold medalist, because of the fact that he signed with a much stronger promotional company and matchroom. He didn't sign with Hennessy. He didn't sign with, you know, Warren and Box Nation, who were also weak at the time. No, he signed with Eddie Hearn Matchroom, who were in a much better position with Sky and whatnot than Warren or Hennessy. It's not rocket science, people. So AJ signed with a stronger promoter, a stronger broadcaster, and he's got this Olympic gold medal you know, whether you think he deserved the gold medal or not, irrelevant. It's the perception that the general British public had of him. He'd been put in the mainstream, okay, because of the gold medal. Anybody who wins a gold medal in the UK is going to be put in the mainstream. 
Yeah, whether it's AJ, whether it's whoever, Mo Farah, um, you know, anyone who wins a gold medal, they're going to put you in the mainstream in the UK. And so that's what happened to AJ. It's not rocket science. So the guy who's already mainstream then signs with a much stronger promoter than Fury signed with. On top of that, he's got women who like him. Yeah, big, big female following because of the way he looks. Then he's knocking people out. He's not going life and death with McDermott getting dropped by, you know, Cunningham. He's knocking people out. Again, the British public like this. The general public like this. This is what they want to see out of a heavyweight. And on top of that, in this politically correct world, AJ is towing the politically correct line. Whether it's a fake persona or not, he is playing the game the way that you have to play the game as a celebrity if you want the mainstream acceptance. Very simple. He's just playing the game, you know, pretending to be this nice guy and you know, kissing babies and saying everything politically correct. That's what AJ did. If Tyson Fury had done that, he would have been a lot more popular too. But Tyson Fury, whether you like the stuff he says or, or don't like the stuff he says, he chose to go down the other route where you're not politically correct, where you say stuff that's going to rub people up the wrong way. And obviously, you're going to get an adverse reaction <laughs> from the media. Obviously, you're going to get an adverse reaction from large sections of the public, particularly the liberal public. You're going to get an adverse reaction from them if you, <laughs> if you say the things that Fury has said. You know, and then, of course, after the Klitschko fight, Fury went on to say things about homosexuals and Jewish people and women, which were obviously going to get him in hot water in today's politically correct climate. It doesn't matter how big a celebrity you are. If you say the things that Fury said about those subjects, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. But somehow, the Fury diehards discount all that and they blame all the bad press that Tyson Fury's had and all the negative... Um, reaction that he's had from the public they blame it all on prejudice against gypsies i mean i've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life is there prejudice against gypsies in the uk of course there is i've seen it with my own eyes i've heard it with my own ears but it's prejudice against many different uh minorities in the uk the point is that is not the main reason why tyson fury has come up against this uh, negativity. It's because of the way he has behaved, the things he's said, the things he's done. This is why. Not because of his gypsy back. There's, there's a small element of people who don't like Tyson Fury because he's a gypsy. There's a small element of people who don't like Anthony Joshua because he's black. In Britain, the main thing that you need to worry about in terms of becoming popular is not what race you are if you're a sportsman. It's, it, particularly if you're a heavyweight boxer, they want exciting performances. And in this day and age, for better or for worse, they want somebody who's politically correct. The media certainly does. The media want a politically correct individual who's going to toe the politically correct line, say all the right things, and then they'll boost you, you know, and have you as a poster boy. That's what they'll do. If you don't do that, and if you do the opposite, they're going to roast you in the media. That's just the way it goes. It don't matter who you are, what color you are, they're going to roast you. So, you know, Tyson Fury is coming out, and now he's going at this politically correct guy, the gold medalist, the guy who's knocking people out. He's attacking him. You see, every step of the way, Tyson Fury was making howler after howler from a PR perspective <laughs> putting his foot in it every time you know it, look if Tyson Fury didn't care about being popular then fine he didn't do anything wrong yeah if he didn't care about being popular and he's happy to be the bad guy then cool no, no problem with the way he did things but the issue with Tyson Fury is that he's always complaining about not getting the support and recognition that AJ and, you know, Price and other fighters have got. How are you going to complain when you are not behaving like them? 
they they have got the support that they did because of the decisions they made with regards to you know promotion etc and the way that they talk the way that they present themselves to the public that's why they've ended up where they are with, you know with the support that they had fury chose not to behave like them it's very simple if he'd behaved like price and aj he would have had a lot more support very very simple <laughs> Yeah, and and if <clears throat> he'd been as destructive as AJ, and if he'd won a gold medal, that also would have boosted his popularity even more. <laughs> but instead, Fury comes out and he wants to play the villain. If you play the villain, cool. There's nothing wrong with playing the villain, but you have to expect that there's going to be backlash when you start playing the villain. But Tyson Fury plays the villain, but acts like the victim. When people, you know, come at him for playing the villain. Like, it's ridiculous. And his fans behave in the same way. They've got Fury who's out there doing all kind of things which anybody would be criticized for in today's world. And when he does get criticized, oh, he's a victim. I mean, it's, it's just so ridiculous, <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. Um, if Tyson Fury had won a gold medal, had signed with Matchroom, so on and so forth, he'd be in a much better position. And, and, and of course, if he'd told the politically correct line before now, he'd be in a much better position. But he didn't. He went the exact opposite direction. Man signed with Mick Hennessy, of all people. <laughs> Mick Hennessy. Bro, you can't sign with Mick Hennessy and expect to become a household name. He was with Mick Hennessy for most of his career. And as I say, Box Nation weren't much better than Hennessy. <laughs> now that he's with BT Sport and Frank Warren is in a much stronger position, we are now seeing Tyson Fury's uh, popularity rise to a level it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been before. We're now seeing it rise. Now that Tyson Fury has also stopped making comments and, and statements which were as controversial as the comments and statements he made after the Klitschko fight now that we've seen that stop again that's helping his popularity rise even more yeah but there obviously needs to be a lot more work when it comes to Tyson Fury's um popularity than has been done so far because he's got a lot of catching up to do one of the things that would help Tyson Fury a lot is showcase fights in the UK against real opposition it's a shame that he's gone over to the united states because it's kind of a missed opportunity now that aj has lost there's an opportunity there for tyson fury to come back to the uk and kind of take over from aj missed opportunity you know because now he's out in in, uh, in the united states and that would really help boost tyson fury's popularity if he would you know come back to the uk maybe fight and beat somebody like dylan white that'd be a great move for tyson fury from a PR perspective, you know, as well as a resume perspective. Um, but again, missed opportunity there. So <laughs> if you choose to fight a pudding in America instead of fighting somebody legit in the UK, well, you know, you're not going to catch up in terms of popularity as much as you would like to. So again, it all comes down to Tyson Fury's decisions. Yeah, this whole, oh, it's all because he's a gypsy. Well, isn't his cousin Andy Lee a gypsy too? Yes, he is. Andy Lee never came in for even a fraction of the criticism that Tyson Fury came in for because Andy Lee doesn't behave like Tyson Fury, <laughs> right? Andy Lee just comes across as a nice guy, you know, very polite and stuff like that. And so and when it comes to the general public, I like Tyson Fury's trash talk, but the general British public a lot of them are not like me, particularly, you know, the, the new liberal crowd and stuff like that. They're not like me. They're, they're not so, um, they're not so uh, receptive to trash talk. Yeah, a lot of them who watch mainstream television all the time, they like someone who's polite, you know, like an AJ or like an Andy Lee or somebody like that. They, they, they like that. Even a David Price. When someone comes in there who's very vulgar, swearing and trash talking, it puts a lot of the general public off. Yeah? It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. 
<laughs> and I'm talking more in the UK than in uh, America. Uh, in the UK, you know, a certain amount of trash talk is permitted, but you would have to have a certain status first before they're going to accept that trash talk. You know, that, that's one thing about the UK. You're going to have to have a certain status. You'd have to achieve, have achieved a certain amount. Um, and you'd already have to have a pretty established fan base before they're going to accept a lot of trash talk from you, you know? Uh, so that's just the way it goes. Tyson Fury was trash talking from the very beginning against popular fighters. That's not going to go down well <laughs> with, with a lot of people in the British public. It's just not. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening about. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.